You're still watching where is now. It's International Day of the Victims of Enforced Disappearances. Now, more than a human rights violation against an individual, enforced disappearance has frequently been used as a strategy to spread terror within the society. The feelings of insecurity generated by this practice is not limited to the close relatives of the disappeared, but also affects their communities and society as a whole. Enforced disappearance has become a global problem and it is not restricted to a specific region of the world. Once largely the product of military dictatorship, enforced disappearances can nowadays be perpetrated in complex situations of internal conflict, especially as a means of political repression of opponents. We see this play out all the time, where if you speak against the particular leadership, you just disappear. If I recently I saw a video of a military guy, um, the wife was calling out on the military to please release her husband, you know, she's not been able to have access to him, she does not know where he is, mm. you know, and the story was that, I mean, I think he, maybe he, he posted a video or something, I can't remember, or he asked yeah. a funny question, you know, I think there are two, one was a video where he, he recorded the the military um, um, superior doing something. Gotcha. Yeah, that was one. Then there's another one that asked a question. A question about their, yes. Yeah. And now he's been denied of his gratuity, blah, blah, blah. He was taken, was thrown out of the military. Held for, for, so. for, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we see this play out all the time. And I'm happy that, because um, this was enacted by the, the UN, and I'm happy that they're talking they about it. it. They have yeah. a day to talk about it. Yeah. So it's just a gross abuse of power as well. Mm. Just. I mean, we see it play out time and time in Nigeria. We hear all sorts of stories of people who have made, I think there was the one that created the meme account. Yeah. And he was picked up. And then there's another um, activist in the north somewhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we just keep hearing these stories. And it's, it's sad. It's distressing that we get to see just the abuse of power, I think, for me, is the real issue here. Yeah. Um, the people who we've elected into power, people who have offices of power, Actually, can use Feel they have that the right, might, yeah. uh, you know, against the plight of the average yeah. man. Absolutely. Sad. You know, the funny thing is that it just goes by. Mm. You know, nobody really does anything yeah. about it. You probably would yeah. not probably maybe remember the story in the next two or three weeks. So it just. It just has a way of fizzling in the air. Yeah, it does, as actually. with everything here. Gone. As with everything. So that's why it's just important that sometimes it's important we to bring all these things to, to, bring yeah, to the fore. Yeah, mm. to the fore, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. All right, so we would um, take Uti's story because AK doesn't have a story for us AK today. AK doesn't have a story. So we are just going <laughs> to okay. we'll take Uti's story. So um, I try to still, I know it feels like there's no COVID anymore mm. and we've all moved on yeah life has moved on you know <laughs> I, saw, I saw i saw i saw a skit on on cracks tv mm -hmm. hope i'm not doing mm -hmm. them. but you know and this case was about i think this is this popular lady i can't remember her name and when there were just three or four cases you see she was so uptight this reminded me of myself you know she was using sanitizers everywhere and then now that is over how many thousand cases and like everybody's hugging oh. <laughs> You know? <laughs> and it's what's happening. I mean, even I myself, sometimes I will get out of the car. I would have gotten to the door of the place and I'm thinking, oh, my, my God. And then I got to go back. And my sanitizer. So you kind of are trying to get used to this new normal, but then it's weird. So, yeah. so what's the story? Um, so, so the story, again, uh, keeping on top of the Lagos state government and what's happening. So it says, the headline says, Songulu announces the date for reopening of Lagos schools. So the Lagos State Government has announced that September 14th for the reopening of tertiary institutions and proposed a week later, September 22nd for primary and secondary schools, but that date isn't fixed yet. So mm. there's a possibility that it might still move. But um, they talked about, so the numbers that I liked was the sort of active cases still, the known active cases <laughs> um, that we still know is about 1,820, which is like a drop in the ocean, right? Yeah. Um, and I think they only have about 47 active cases that are currently being um, managed in isolation centers. So, I mean, it, it largely is what we're seeing out there. It just feels like COVID has gone away. And it's important for people to realize that it hasn't gone away. It's mm. still here. The only but question... Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. Dylan. Um, sorry to cut you. The only question I, I would mm. have loved to ask, the people are asking for us to res resume... Mm. Um, schools and all of that have they checked because now you know in nigeria nigeria is not like other places 
parts of the world mm. where the government schools are actually structured that you can actually do without private schools. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is largely dependent on private schools. So how many of these private schools, and I'm not, when I'm talking private schools, I'm not talking about the big names. The big, yeah. I'm talking about the, the mushroom, mushroom schools, schools that yeah. have yeah, a absolutely. lot more populations mm -hmm. there. So how many of these um, schools have put in place plans. the plans you know, for safety measures and all of that? I think the Ministry of Education two months ago, really at the peak of the pandemic, had released um guidelines like yes they did guidelines to how when eventually schools resume mm -hmm. how it should be and i if i recall from the excerpts i read from that school wouldn't be every day for every class mm. so it's to whether it's the guideline there it is but do they have the capacity and the resources and to exactly to mm. implement and then monitor these things mm. and that, that would be the real question Absolutely. but have they been thinking about how this is going to pan out mm. yes my child yeah. isn't going to school this year. I'm sorry, folks. Like, <laughs> I can protect worry. myself. Your child you are actually you even... That you, your child my, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You are even blessed. You have younger... You know, your child is young. My son is in school as we are talking now. He's writing junior work. You know, we are monitoring. But the school from... Let me tell you one thing about that school. You know, you, we, we were taking it lightly. Mm -hmm. When Ebola struck... See, I, I don't know because I was not in school before Ebola. But since then, even before all this, uh, whatever, washing up, any time we go to the school, everybody must come down from the car, wash your hands, you know, um, sanitize your hands. And it, so it's been a oh, wow, constant. Really? Wow. Yes, in a lot of It's been a constant in a lot of But I like what you said. So, so I like what you said. Even, yeah. Your, your child is among the very few people that yes. are such schools. So that's what I'm saying, that with those kind of schools, I'm at peace because I know that they have already the measures even without all this so now when we went to drop him in school, we, we're not allowed to go into the school we had seen that even beyond the washing of hands now they've in added um temperature checks, checks. they've added sanitizers uh, they added a form you had to fill you know mm -hmm. there's so many yeah, things, in place. things in place but I, th I think that even more so for that i think that as adults we understand how to protect ourselves children i do. have a child who's a hugger yes <laughs> i'm a hugger he is. my child is he's a hugger a, a cute so hugger. you can't tell him he doesn't understand like he tells you mommy hug and you don't want to hug and he's like <gasps> and mm. he starts crying mm. so in a school setting he's also going to want to hug his teachers going to want to hug his classmates mm -hmm. I'm like D you don't need to go to school there's, this no year. Need. there's no need <laughs> no, i'm sorry <laughs> my story is actually um you know because i loved what um um ak did on friday talking about southern kaduna mm -hmm. and saying that you know most times we we commensurate with people abroad and mm -hmm. our own back home, it home. We don't we don't do that and you know and i'm so happy that we're taking this story you know just to celebrate the life of um the captain that lost his life um captain um chike ns that's his name um i want to celebrate um him you know and you know we 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 officially had a hero you know because i mean when you read the story um all the reports that were going around said that he had emptied because when he saw that the helicopter was about was to crash. Down. He mm -hmm. had emptied the fuel tank because he knew that if the helicopter crashed mm -hmm. with the fuel tank intact, it would have caused a lot more casualty and mm -hmm. there would have been fire. Because a lot of people were wondering that how come a helicopter there no crashed, fire. there was no fire. So he had emptied the fuel tank and you know, so and again, when he was landing, he landed in between fences. So he didn't land on the house. a building and all of that. So I, 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 must, I must say to his family, Yes, he's gone, but know that he was a hero, hero even in is. death. And we really, really, our heart goes out to um, the family. family. Yeah, okay. our heart goes out to the family. <laughs> All right, so I think um, on that note, <laughs> we'll take a break. And when we return, we'll discuss Rising Above Heart. And our producer, Fumi Jeffrey, will join us. Stay with us. We'll be right back.